Today I'm shipping off a handful of animals and I thought I'd show them off to you as I go. Because of the thing happening around the world, uh, FedEx is kind of closing in around us a little bit. Normally we can ship Monday through Thursday, now we can only ship Monday through Wednesday. So today's Monday and uh, we're shipping three of the baby beardies, a couple snakes, and possibly a couple of the lizards once I get confirmation on those. If you just saw one of my recent videos on how not to care for bearded dragons, you would have seen these tiny ones. And we had six of them. It turns out there are only five in the video because I literally couldn't find one of them in the enclosure. But half of them are being shipped off. And thankfully they can fit in these nice tiny boxes so it's more affordable. I need packing stuff. And the beardies are being shipped in transparent snake bags. So it's actually warm enough at one of the locations that they won't even need a heat pack. So I'll just have to keep up with these, make sure I mark the right one to make sure he doesn't overheat on the way. And uh, even in these six inch boxes, they have a lot of space to move around, which you don't really want them to be able to move around because if the box is dropped or hit bumped around or something, uh, you don't, don't want them to hit their head on the side. So I'm gonna put some more paper, which is breathable, believe it or not. We do not add holes in these boxes. Uh, some people do, but generally uh, it's just worse for shipping uh, because they can breathe just fine but the holes end up making the box a little less insulated uh, because that cold or hot air is going to flow through the box. Uh, and it also lowers the integrity of the box just a little bit, not enough to where it'll be crushed. Just for fun, I kind of tried stepping on one of these, and uh, I mean, I'm not that heavy, but I was able to stand on uh, one of the slightly larger boxes and it didn't even bend, so that was a good sign. Kind of our own little at-home testing to make sure everything is safe. So I just had to run a target because I was out of tape. And I'm in a slight rush. I don't want to lose track of time as I always do, as some of you may know. But the first beardy is just about packed. Pretty simple. And then I have the labels, so I'm just gonna mark which is which so I know which labels to put on when I'm done. All the beardies are packed and ready to go. Uh, I double check the labels, make sure they're on the right box. Because although I'm not even paranoid about the health of an animal while shipping anymore, because we've pretty much nailed that so well, I do still get paranoid that I'm going to put the wrong label on, but we've been good. The next two I'm shipping are two snakes, which I think you've seen both of them. You've definitely seen the second one. Uh, the first one is this cinnamon ball python. Honestly, I don't remember much about it, uh, but what I do is before we ship each animal, I pack, I guess, maybe 80 or 90 percent of them. And uh, I actually just basically look over the animal, make sure everything looks as we thought it did, and make sure nothing new has come up. Because although we check on every animal multiple times a week, it's possible something could have slipped by. Say the snake suddenly has like a scratch, or it's looking a little thinner than we thought. Uh, then we would contact the person, be like, so we noticed this thing right before shipping, and we just don't feel 100% comfortable. Checking on each animal before, instead of just throwing them in the box, is a really good way to stop those like 2% cases where something is a little bit different from what we expected and we're not actually comfortable shipping. But for by far the most part, uh, that's never a problem thankfully because they're kept with us for quite a while anyway. And uh, you'll notice he's not coiled up yet so he's not really gonna fit. But once he does coil, I'm basically just gonna sit him on the box and he's kind of coiling himself into position and that'll keep him nice and snug or her, I don't actually remember on this one. And the second snake is one that a lot of people were eyeing. That's the Peruvian longtail boa. Uh, this one was in an unboxing and instantly people were asking when they could buy it. And uh, I think there were about 15 or 20 people that ended up like inquiring about when it'll be ready. <laughs> so um, we don't totally know. I think it took them a few weeks to start eating, but once a snake eats consistently, uh, we basically don't actually list them until they've had many consistent meals with us to make sure the future owner won't have, or will have a lesser chance of problems with feeding. Because of course animals change and they could have issues, but uh, it definitely lowers that. It sold within a few minutes of being listed. Uh, I, I say it a lot, but I'll just mention it uh, in case you somehow haven't heard. If you want to be the very first to know when an animal's up, I post them on Patreon first, which is $5 a month, and you get random perks, including like seeing when animals are going to be up first. And he's not in the coil at all, but he'll start to coil in. Uh, second place I post is the newsletter, which is an, a free email that I send out. Um, so basically for reference, there's about 300 patrons. Um, so you can be the first of the first 300 or so if you join there. Uh, and then on the newsletter, there's about 15,000 people. So you'd be the first of those 15,000, or I guess second, after the Patreon. And then I post on Instagram, Twitter, and possibly YouTube. Uh, and then that's like 500,000 people combined. So basically, you can get like a free pass 
to get early access through the newsletter or like a super ultra premium pass on the, on the Patreon thing. For the most part, I think you'll always find something that is interesting to you because we have so many different species coming in and out. So if you don't want your email shared and if you don't want to actually spend money, you can always just wait for the Instagram posts and uh, see what's happening there. I have two accounts. There's my personal where I just post all sorts of stuff and then the Emerald Scales where we only post new animals available. So basically if you don't want to get spammed out with my stuff, you can just follow Emerald Scales. The funny thing about the Bearded Dragons is all six of them sold almost immediately and they all sold to completely different people, but two of them just so happened to be going to Maryland and I looked up the addresses just out of curiosity and uh, they're only going to be living 16 minutes apart. So, play date? Not really, I can't, I can't share the information with the, with the people, so no play date. But they'll be forever linked, just a few minutes apart, which is just kind of funny. So the successful long tail buyer uh, follows me on, er, on Twitter, so I expect, I expect pictures. Thank you very much. But it's weird how much tape we go through. To really keep track of expenses, I try to know the price of everything. Um, the price of each box ranges between four and eight dollars, generally speaking. The price of the tape, for example, is one and a half cents per foot. So, you know, I just, although I'm happy to use as much tape as is needed, I just remember, there goes one and a half cents. The nice thing about our flat rate shipping is, uh, as an example, and then this labels on well, as an example, some of the animals are super tiny in these small boxes and might only be going, I think one's going to Virginia or something, um, or maybe it's one of the other animals. Uh, but that's that's cheap. It only costs us maybe $40, $40 or so to ship. Uh, but you might be like, wait, but you're charging $50 for shipping. And that's because some of these other boxes cost $60 to $70 to ship, and so it all evens out well. On average, it's $55 to ship a box. Uh, based on the past hundred shipments or so. We eat about five bucks per animal, not including the box, which is about another five, not including the 1.5 cents of tape, which is another little bit. So we probably lose $15 or so on shipping uh, per animal on average, but the other stuff makes up for it. And I'm definitely getting faster at shipping. I can even do it while talking, and I made sure it's the right animal. Uh, five are ready to go. We've got two more animals to go, uh, one of which is just another beardy, which I have to find. Uh, I think it's at the our other location, which is actually just my bedroom at my parents' house, because uh, we're kind of full here. And we originally had some animals outside that could be out there, but the people that managed this area didn't like it, so we had to move them in and then move some of my parents. But um, Little B is being shipped today. You might recognize him from the most recent unboxing, um, and don't worry. I have his blanket. For those of you that don't know, uh, the previous owner crocheted or knitted, I'm not sure which one, a little blanket for him that he kind of uh, grew up with. And it's kind of bittersweet uh, because it shows that the previous owner really cared. So we definitely are always more sad when someone has to rehome because they have to and not because they want to. Um, but you might, I don't know, you might be surprised, I guess, how few people actually care about their animals when they give them to us. I try to highlight the, the good ones, uh, generally, like in the unboxings. I try to read all the notes that people give them, and just because you don't include a note doesn't mean you don't care about the animal. Uh, not many people include notes, but just based on the way that people talk, and based on the way they try to rush us into shipping their animals to us, the way they package the animal, the way they don't follow our instructions on which days are safe to ship, just so many things, uh, it makes it very clear that the majority of people that rehome genuinely don't care about the animal and they simply pay us to take it because it kind of takes away that guilt and it they no longer have to deal with it. But Lil B is an example of that not being the case with every single person. Because basically you don't feel that bad taking in someone's animal if they weren't even caring about it. Especially not caring for it if it was cared for poorly. But yeah, uh, it, I'm, I'm sad to report that it's a minority of people that actually <laughs> care about their animal. It's obvious when they don't. Um, so Lil B was one that a lot of people were interested in as well. He, for one, he's a more unique dude to dragon. He has that weird stubby face I made fun of in the unboxing. And then obviously he's already named by the people. We usually keep the names, um, unless it's like not necessarily appropriate for the site on Emerald Scales. But he already came with a name, he came with his blanket, and there was uh, an owner that obviously cared. So more people 
we're willing to kind of take him in and give him a cool um, like rest of his life to live out. Instead of being or not being sure if he's gonna go to a good place if they got rid of him on Craigslist or something. And I'll just add quilt on top. Now, this is an example of a box that's already been used. We're actually running low on this size, so uh, this box is a little bit beat up, but you won't really be able to tell once the label's on. And they get bumped around anyway in shipping, so it's not like it would arrive there in pristine condition anyway. And this one is going to Virginia. So actually not too far. I'm thinking of kind of following up with uh, people that have bought to see if any of them want to share images and uh, start posting them on the Emerald Scales account or something. Uh, just so you can kind of see updates on those that you get almost attached to in a way on the channel. And Lil B is ready to go. Uh, in case you're wondering, the owner said they are keeping his name Lil B. Uh, I'm not sure what the B stands for. I'm guessing Beardy or something, but uh, regardless, they're changing it to something else. So, But he will still be Lil B. This is also the one that had some really clogged femoral pores, which I showed how to unclog in the Bearded Dragon video that I mentioned earlier. And I have a picture of that now, and you can see that they've really healed up really well using our little technique, which is literally just squeezing them out. And there we go. He's labeled and ready to go. And the weather's finally good enough, so. Uh, let's get these to FedEx. Okay, I'm at FedEx now. They're closing in 45 minutes, so I didn't cut it too close this time. Sometimes I'll literally cut it like 60 seconds to 30 seconds where I'll walk in and they're instantly closing the door behind me. I've even been late before and I'll call and like beg them to stay open and they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, looks like it's time to floor it. Anyway, um, you can <laughs> see they have a bunch of cones in there. Um, because they only let one person in the building at a time for the sake of social distancing. Um, not, not that it's bad to social distance, I'm just tired of hearing that term. Uh, anyway, four boxes there, two there, but I'm gonna bring these inside. And they're off. The car is empty, uh, no more animals. When I brought the packages in, uh, they like they have this whole system to keep like contaminants from spreading and stuff. Uh, if, if you didn't know, I can't say the words about the illness because YouTube will kind of demonetize and potentially blacklist the video because it's not very advertiser friendly. But anyway, like I said, because of the, the uh, you know, the illness that's happening right now, uh, they only let a couple people in the building at a time. And they have like this whole system where like you put the boxes on this table, you don't walk near the FedEx employees, uh, you leave them on the table, you sign, and they grab them from you. Like once you leave, they grab them off the table to make sure there's always that six plus feet. But I think the problem is uh, I, I had a lot of packages and they didn't feel like having to go through that whole process. So they're like, yeah, here, just come over, just come behind the table, just come to the normal counter. And, uh, and I was literally a couple inches from them. Personally, I don't mind too much, but I think it's just an example of how no one's really actually taking it very seriously. Obviously not no one. Some people are full on lockdown, being super careful, but most people are just doing things like, oh, I'm gonna put some gloves on and then I'm gonna scratch my face. Or like, I'm gonna wear a mask, but then I'm gonna lower the mask to talk to people. It's <laughs> the that's not how it works that's not how germs work you gotta actually follow the rules that you set for yourself for example use the table in between the employees again i didn't feel uncomfortable i don't i don't really mind but that's my mini rant about that so it's now 7 50. Uh, it took maybe a couple hours to do the whole process of making the labels making sure the labels are right confirming with everyone that they'll be home tomorrow and uh, packaging them, making sure it's the right animals and stuff. That's the process of shipping. I know I've done one of these before, but I, there was some more insight I could show you. I wanted to show off some of the animals that you've maybe seen before so you can see them on their way. And maybe we'll get some updates from uh, those people that got, that, that got them. So enjoy your animals tomorrow to those of you that are getting them. Yeah, that's it. I haven't eaten all day. Oops. But also I woke up late. I woke up at like 3 p.m. So I'm gonna go and kind of start my day now. <laughs> and get cleaning on some animals so links below to just a bunch of random cool stuff if you want to get notified if you want to buy merchandise whatever check out the description and uh that's it for this video so i'm alex and thanks for watching